These are my sort of views around just doing a simple analysis of what we have to solve. If I have a look at this lack of cross-silo you know, cooperation, there's a lot of people who just want to go and run their business, do their thing, and don't really want to cooperate. We talked a little about uh, earlier, a lot, of, a lot of you have said to me, you came for three things. You came because you sold your business in because you wanted access to customers. That hasn't happened because we've kept our little silos. You wanted access to capital. That hasn't happened because of you know, lots of our issues. All that really happened was the BE rating. We really need to change that. We've got a very inefficient corporate structure, and so we need to break that down. It's costing us nearly 300 million rand a year just because we're not prepared to get rid of legal structures and do things, and that's just purely tax. We make a loss here, we make a profit here, we pay tax here, we don't get offset here. It's simple. Obviously, the debt's an issue. Uh, we need access to capital. We need to, to get that. There's a plan for that. We'll get there. We've got some gaps in our offering. Um, I think for the last two years, we've fallen a little bit behind on things like security, uh, even data and data analytics. Varsha is just picking that up, but it's small relative to our, our business. We, we need to plug those gaps. We need to be relevant because these are the things that customers are asking for. We have a single country reliance, and that's what I call fragile, because if South Africa struggles, we struggle. We need to change that, and I'll talk more about it later. Fortunately, we've got a great business in Egypt, 100 million people growing at 6%. South Africa can learn from them what they're doing. It's actually massively exciting, and it's all smart city, safe city stuff, uh, smart industry, exactly where we play. What are our strengths? We've got a massive client base, over 5,000 clients paying us a billion dollars. If we can't make that work, uh, we shouldn't be here. We're very innovative, and so one thing we, we will be doing is creating this EOH API store, app store, microservices store, catalog it, and let people you know, work on it. There's some other things I'll, I'll talk about in a minute around that. What is nice is we're very modular. It's actually one of the reasons that uh, saved us, is that we've got these businesses that can carry on in sort of a scatter guy, uh, diagram, not even in parallel, they're just there and they don't all catch cold at the same time. And although we need to consolidate into bigger units, we need to keep that modularity because not all businesses are going to grow at the same speed and if you vertically integrate, you end up with the lowest common denominator. So we need to keep that agility, it's really important. Clearly we've got good skills, we've got one of the biggest uh, open source dev uh, you know, businesses in, in South Africa. We can create great hubs. We've got Prague, we've got Western Cape, we've got Kozulu Natal, and we've got Egypt that can go into um, Middle East, which is a huge, huge opportunity. What's the opportunity? I've talked a little bit about it. Share IP, this MENA Europe uh, um, expansion, following our customers. We're doing some brilliant work in Switzerland, brilliant work in Prague with uh, AWS and Google with Sassel, uh, very, very exciting stuff. And if we can just start replicating that. I think we need to uh, relook at Africa. Uh, we need to find a way where we can build on top of some of our businesses that are um, already there. I think that's going to take some time and we'll need to do it bit by bit. But we've got the ability because we've got the top and we've got the bottom, we've got the skills, and we need to export into those areas. This whole Lego effect of you know, creating platforms we can build them. We've even got some of them. It's quite interesting you know, where they, they sit. If you think about what we're doing in um, Nuvotech now, that platform uh, Adrian was, was talking about, there's lots of things you can do with that uh, just because of the way it's built. And then I've talked about the catalogue of products. I think this is critical. We've got so much. You know, we've got everything for e-commerce. We've got identity, we've got digital signatures, we've got... Um, payment uh, uh, hubs, we've got all that in different parts of the business. What are our threats? Brand decay, not sure, you know, I'm not sure where the EOH brand goes, it's something we're going to have to deal with for the, the end of next year, you know, whether we think it's actually got better because people now see us as um, the uh, um, 
front runners in, in, this, in this whole dealing with corruption or not? Do we need to change it? The Oco brand has been massively successful. People love it. They love the feel, the color, the CR, the name. Uh, so we've got some options. Next Tech has done well uh, as well. Um, you know, people identify with it. They see it as um, separate. So there's some decisions we need to make there. RSA economy it was quite interesting. I was, I was at a CEO thing last night with uh, Adam Habib and Yako Marie, and they were just talking about all the things that need to be done. The problem was it's a list of 15 things that need to be done. So there's a lot of work to be done in South Africa. So we need to expand offshore into other markets where we can take our competitive advantage, and I'll talk about that. Disruption from cloud technologies. We've obviously got some businesses that are will get disrupted, the way software gets sold, the way um, infrastructure gets sold, and we're going to need to have a look at that. And uh, if, we don't, if, if we don't join up and start working together, this inability to pivot just means some businesses will just fall off the end, and that's, that's not a good idea because they just become less and less uh, efficient and profitable. We really need to do that. We really need to optimize and uh, create this single organization with lots of uh, um, you know, different businesses that are all working together. And I do think um, we've got a real opportunity uh, if we are prepared to actually properly work together. And I'm really counting on all of you to feedback on how you see that happening, what works, what doesn't work, and um, you know, let's, let's continue to improve over time. From where I stand, it's, it's quite interesting that uh, We've survived last year, and we've come out actually almost better than we went into it. And that just tells me the type of people that are sitting in the business. You know, we survivors, we're resilient, we're tough, we get on with stuff, we look after our customers, um, we really want to be, you know, better. And I do think that um, if we can create this integrated one-stop shop uh, for customers where we can actually help them uh, with their solutioning and you know I've always been on the other side I've always been buying your services and the problem was always is that uh, everything goes through a CIO the CIO doesn't understand business problems he's not the guy sitting in the f as the FD running a, a financial system getting the information out having to do tax returns having to deal with banks having to deal with investors and more and more of this demand for uh, digital services are going to come from the business owners, whether it's the head of retail, or the CEO of retail, or the, the, um, uh, the con uh, consumer guy, or the brand guy, or the FD, or the, the human resources person. They're going to be saying, all I want is, is the outcome. All I want is this to happen. And I remember when I was at MTN that uh, you know, Apogee, big data stack, we started that. But you know how difficult it was because there was no one who could come and say to me, okay, Stephen, this is the solution you want. He has all the different options you've got that you have to put together and we can do it all for you. I had to go and read Gartner reports, go and see lots of different people to try and piece it together for myself. And I think those days are rapidly coming to an end. You know, when you go into Facebook, you don't think about what the technology stack is, what the connectivity is, how fast is it, how big is the pipe, what's the processing speed, you know, what software is there. All you want to do is get onto Facebook, read something, um, send something, and it must work and it must be fast. It mustn't hang. And this is where we're going to. And I can see the big opportunity for us is in this mid-tier space. If we can build stuff for ourselves, you know, everything EOH wants, Every other company wants, whether it's an ERP system, a business system, as, as, as Megan calls it, um, uh, CRM, HR, BR, all that stuff. Learning and development, training, employee app. Everyone needs that. Businesses run like that. And if we can start building them for ourselves, and then, as Warwick says, you just, you know, put it on the internet, and if, if, if someone wants to buy a bit of it, they get their credit card and they, they buy usage. We can start building stuff like that for our customers and start creating the, the learnings, or even building with our customers. Get someone to Absa Bank to build a new funky core banking system for Africa, pay us the cost of it, and as we sell it into other countries, they can get some of the license fees back. 
And so they start generating revenue from um, are, are dealing with things. We're already doing that a bit in Prague at the moment with some of their um, data uh, storage systems. Uh, so this is the new way business is going to work. And if we can get that right, um, we can really scale our business. And instead of just it being, you know, so many hours per person plus a 10% margin, there's our business, we can actually have a lot of fun. I think today as well, I've spoken about this as well, is um, that uh, digitization is making things more transparent. Um, information is everywhere. You know, once it's there on the server, it's there. Once it's out on the air on Facebook, you can Google it. I promise you it'll come up. There's an amazing amount. And this is where uh, we need to have a properly transparent, socially ethical business um, you know, mindset. There's things we just can't do. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit later in the, in the day, but uh, fragility or anti-fragility, is, is, it isn't about the probability of something happening. Even if it's got the smallest 0.001% chance of happening, if it happens, it's, it's catastrophic. You can't let it happen. You can't do it. Because today, the chance of that happening is even getting bigger, but you don't want to have those those chances, just to give you an example for, you know, it's, it's like uh, if, if um, I need to win this contract, I need to do X, Y, and Z, the chance of people knowing, small, therefore I'm going to do it because I can get the revenue. The problem is, is, as we saw, you only have to have one of those things in the newspaper today or one of those things on social media, you're dead. And this is why we have to have a very, very strong conscious about the type of business we do and the type of business we don't do because otherwise you work hard for 10 years and boom, it goes. We have a lot of highly talented people and this is one bit I'm not going to talk about now because we've got a whole section on it later. And I really want to talk about how we're going to deal with people when we hire them, when we fire them, when we um, reward them, when we um, uh, promote them. We need to have a set of rules, ethics, uh, questions that we have to answer every time to get consistency. And I really want some feedback on that because once again, it's some of my thoughts and some of the things I've done in my, my past jobs. But at the end of the day, we all have to believe it and we all have to get into it together. So how does it look for me? So this is this whole client-centric model. It's amazing how many businesses are product-centric. They build products and then they try and sell them instead of going to the customer, finding out what the customer wants and then building what the customer wants. Clearly, sometimes the, customer wa the customers want things that don't make money. Well, you can't do that either. And so one has to get a balance of that. But we have to put our clients at the center of what we do and not just build stuff for the sake of building it. Um, one of my past colleagues said to me, she said to me, Stephen, innovation isn't doing something new for you. It's doing something new for your customer. And this is what we have to get right. We are very lucky that we've got a great solutioning advisory businesses, both in EOH consulting and free thinking and Rudy's uh, solutions business. We've got some real, real good stuff there, both here, both in the Western Cape and in Egypt. Uh, and we need to build on that. What we don't do is we don't do great um, uh, cross-BU sales. We don't do great client management. We don't have people who can go and talk to the CEOs and the COOs really at the top in the um, executive committee and say, let me understand your strategy. Let me see what EOH can bring together to help you. And uh, we need to get that right. And so Ian and Marius are going to be driving that quite hard. But the way I see it, Customer at the, at the center, solutioning at the center, and then we've got our businesses around the outside. It's the enterprise apps, uh, the SAP, uh, Oracle, Data, the app dev business or the, the open digital business um, that's doing a lot of um, a dev work. You've got the data and analytics, automation and AI, and I put IoT in there, we've got a Viva business. The compute business, which is largely the HP, IBM, Dell business and the services on top of that, really the infrastructure layer, and then you've got a, the software 
reseller, which is largely CO. Those are all the things any customer needs in their IT. And then clearly, around the outside, it's no good having great IT if you don't have connectivity, if you don't have security, and obviously a lot of our customers are asking us to manage and operate a lot of those things, not all of them at the moment. We're very much infrastructure, but you can see us managing their clouds over time, and we'll see where that gets to, but we need to move up a gear. The next layer for me that's very interesting is really these mid-corporates who want to focus on the front end of their business and not the back end. And EOH started that by outsourcing some of our, our uh, things to our, our companies. But I can see in, in, in uh, time, you, um, digitization will allow smaller and smaller um, uh, corporates to proliferate because they can digitally go and get an HR service, swipe a credit card, and I've got access to a full HR service from payroll you know, to onboarding, to learning and development, all the bits we need. You can see it for legal, you can see it for finance. Clearly, there's always going to be the specialist advice bit around the edge, but 80% of what they need for infrastructure, you're going to buy, you're not going to have it. So very, very light businesses. And I think we've got a great opportunity to build that, because number one, we've got all the Lego blocks, we've got all the bits and pieces, and we need it ourselves. And one of the th things we can do is if, if, if you've always got one customer that's at least paid for the build, you can marginally cost the new customers coming on. And if you think about marginally costing an, an, an offering, it's the ultimate barrier to entry. Because it's very difficult for someone to come and compete against you when you're only marginally costing something. And this is how you get scale. And this is how all the hyperscalers and the big unicorns uh, business models work. You need scale, and we've got the scale. Um, and then on the outside is, is the platforms. These are the platform businesses we've got. We've got a cons construction software company. We've got the, the big data uh, platform that people like MTN, Edcon, uh, Absa Wealth use. We've got Sintel, which is, a, which is a smart city. It's really a traffic management uh, um, uh, um, a platform that also you know operates on a on a, a, a revenue share, and then you've got Cybrin, which is really a fintech company that started out doing digi check stuff. Real Doc Man has got into um, ETF processing and a lot of other things, and have built a low code platform. We've got more of those; they're just a bit smaller. These are real big businesses. I think together they make um, uh, close to about 400 million EBITDA. Those four. Um, and we need to bring some of these platforms on that we've got from outside, scale them, make them open, let people see them, but we need to build more. And it's something uh, we've already started having discussions around. What are the basics that we need? And then we can build them out. Um, so this is how the eco ecosystem works. If you think all of these bits, as you go further out, they need the core bit, they need the clients, they need the basic system in, in, integration bit or the OCO bit, plus uh, some of the digital industries bit, and then you can see how we can build bits on the outside using all the Lego blocks we've already got and the core skills we've got. But once again, we need to clearly save some money so that we can invest in building this out. But quite simple, uh, but very powerful as you provide end-to-end -end services for customers. And I suppose our, our key goal is just to take the weight off our client's shoulders. Let them do what they're good of, and we'll manage the rest for you. And I think this is where we're going to see it going. In a world where rapidly changing technologies are altering the course of humanity, our purpose is what defines us reverberating deep within our core. Our purpose evokes pride, integrity and innovation in everything we do and moves us towards a sustainable and transformative future. Our purpose is to solve. To solve for our clients. To solve for ourselves. We harness the power of our immensely talented people to scale and accelerate technologies well beyond the needs of today. We exist to solve challenges courageously and exponentially using our deep industry expertise. 
While the world around us continues to transform, we adapt and remain united and anti-fragile through our commitment to each other, our clients and stakeholders. We exist to solve. Exponentially. Courageously. Together. This is really where um, we, we need to go. We are people's business. We solve our customers' problems. We solve our own problems. And this is going to be our strap line. Um, but we need to do it with a different mindset. It's not about doing it slightly better than yesterday or slightly better than the day before. It's about doing it fundamentally differently. Exponentially, people get... Uh, quite, uh, you know, sometimes quite emotional about because it's a mathematical term. But really for me, exponential is just, exponentially is about thinking differently. You know, if you say to someone, go and reimagine your business, you've got to do it at 10% the cost and you've got to deliver 10 times the revenue. You can't go back to what you did last year. And it's not that you're going to do it at 10% the cost and get 10 times the benefit. It means you have to start from the beginning. You've got to think differently. As Einstein says, you know, you can't do the same thing, same old, same old, same old, and expect different results. And in this world that's moving so fast, we've got lots of competitors, we've got lots of people coming at us, we've got even, you know, some of our customers are trying to be our competitors. And unless we think differently about stuff, we're just going to get left behind. What's interesting, and I've, I've spoken to some of you about this, is exponential is a very interesting thing. Exponential looks very linear in the beginning. It starts at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and then suddenly it goes 1.6, 3.2, 6.4, and that's too late. You know, if in, in the beginning, as your customers come at you, uh, or your, your competitors come at you, you st they look as if they're pedestrian, and suddenly they run away from you. And this is the problem of the world we live in. And so if we're not thinking exponentially for our customers, we're not leapfrogging three or four years for them, um, by the time you've implemented something, it's already out of date. So we need to think differently. We need to push the boundaries. And this is something that's going to be at the heart of you know, how we go th through. Courageously is very important. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was quite interesting. And, uh, quite a few of the um, sessions I've been to with Various, various of the CEO forum, is that something that's lacking, is that people aren't prepared to be different. They just want to follow the crowd because they don't want to stick out. That's not going to differentiate us enough. You know, if we're just doing what the next people are doing, that's not a differentiator. What's been very interesting for me, seeing customers through this whole ENS report, is uh, the debates people have had because they know they can't get rid of us quickly. You know, I had a big fight with one of my last employees, and eventually I said to them, listen, just tell me if you want us in or out, because I've got very good people working in your organization. I need to deploy them somewhere else. And we actually went through with Simon, we went through and we did a whole list of all the services we're doing for them. They came back three weeks later and said, we've got a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, it's going to take us three years to exit. So I said, great, the margin's gone up 10%. Let's have a different discussion. But we need to continue that. We need to continue with ourselves. We've got to push how we run our organization, what we do, um, what are the, the options, how do we deal with our staff, how do we deal with working hours, how do we deal with innovation, how do we deal with anything. We've really got to push those boundaries a bit, really get ourselves outside our comfort zone. Because if we can do it for ourselves and we can experiment with ourselves, we can do it for our customers. And I can tell you there's not a lot of businesses out there doing that. And courageously means that you've got to be different. You've got to put your hand up when you don't feel comfortable. You've got to put your hand up when you don't see, see things are right. Because that's going to differentiate us um, uh, totally. And lastly, the together bit. The together bit is critical. Because if we don't do it together, uh, you, you're just on your own. And they say, you know, if you want to walk fast, Walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together. And this is what we want to do. We want a business that's going to be around for another 21 years, at least. We've got to walk together. We've got to do it together. We've got a solution together. We've got to challenge each other. Um, 
We've got great people, as I said before, and I can't say it enough. We get a billion dollars every year into this company. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. And the opportunity to make it two is even more phenomenal. When I have a look at how many more options we've got, just talking to you know, people about cross-pollination. It's really, really interesting. And so this is going to form the basis of the way we go forward. We are going to solve together, simplify, consolidate, allow us to scale. We need to save to invest. We need to do that. And if we can do that, we just become a more powerful business. So what we've done is we've flattened the structure. Um, I'm going to get far more involved now, closer to the business. And we've broken it out into its bits. And really what I'm asking you all is to, in this EOH, EOH, EOH way of doing things, in the design thinking, and the EXO, we're going to take it forward and um, um, we're going to build our strategy so that when we do our budgets, we've, we've got an approved strategy. When we do our KPIs, it's off the back of a holistic design. I don't know what the exact answer is in each of these, and I don't pretend to, but the clever people that sit in each of those lines are going to go away, think about it, come back, and we're going to put it all together so we've got a proper investment case that we can go out with. All of these bits are important. Even, you know, um, Next Tech at the moment is obviously going through change. We're having a look at it. We're cleaning it up. We're seeing what there is there. And the businesses we think that, you know, fit in holistically with our business model, we'll put into um, an, a separate bits. The ones that we don't think we're the best owner with, we'll, we'll work with management to find the best partner and uh, deal with those. But we pretty much are where we are now, and there's some very interesting bits that we can start putting together, and I'm very excited about it. And it may mean we're not a pure RCT company going forward, but it doesn't matter, because the systems integration business is needed in some of these outer layers. So where we can build some of these platforms in different businesses, we'll do that using our Lego blocks that we've got. Um, so if you have a look at it, obviously, um, you're aware of Fatima and uh, the, the whole CRO role. Um, and, um, you know, Megan, both of them are looking to build our platform for ourselves. And you, you can think about it just in a in an HR perspective, as, you know, someone wants to come and uh, join us, they onboard themselves, come for the interview, they uh, don't get chosen, they go into our uh, talent repository, they do get chosen, they then get onboarded, they then get an ID number, you know, everything for payroll, they get access to it, they can then go into their different Stripe, they can put their interests on it, they can um, um, get involved in the... Um, training and development, if they are a director, they'll be told when the board meetings are. You can see a whole ecosystem just coming around that uh, employee. And then you can start actually getting external people. Just think about an ABSA or NetBank coming onto our portal and saying, I need these type of developers. Let me go and Google and see what's on the EOH portal. And then they come to us and say, I need these five skills. Please can you you know, bring them. So you can see how digitized it can become quite easy. Ditto for, as uh, Megan calls it, business systems, which uh, have a single golden source of data that uh, you, can, you can Google uh, information on customers, on clients, on your sales, on your costs, on everything, and we can actually all have it at our, at our fingertips. Um, I've asked Marius, he's done a great job uh, just helping me out uh, when... Um, um, Rob left and uh, really managing that, that business while I was finishing up things. What I've asked him to do is go and really build out this sales and advisory consultant solutioning business. Uh, clearly, the biggest issue is the sales bit. Uh, the rest, Simon's been managing well, uh, but the bid office and marketing, everything will stay in there. No change to that, but we need to get our sales right, so Morris and Ian will be doing that. I've I took network solutions and manage and operate out of uh, the compute bit because I think we need to look at them differently. There's some real opportunities there for, for both of them. And once we've come up with a strategy around them, we'll decide exactly where they fit. But for now, I think they sit there um, differently. 
Matombo and Cornerstone. We're going to con consolidate that. We'll run out uh, Matombo. There were about 54 government contracts left. Eight of them we've got a problem with. Myself, Lafuna and Morris are going to you know, personally manage those and get them closed, sorted out, whatever we have to do. The other 40-odd are going to go back into the business lines and get managed within the product lines to make sure we execute them properly and we've got one center of excellence. I think um, you know, some of our, our finds in, in uh, Next Tech is the whole digital industries, Wonderware, IT, um, that type of businesses, very exciting. Uh, we just need to get more customers and expand them and really make them a proper offering, back them into some of our big data stacks so that we can do proper analytics. Um, I've also asked um, um, you know, Morris to manage where we go with this knowledge process outsourcing, KPO, uh, OKR, or OK something they call it now. Um, but it's really this back office as a service in you know, a business. We've got some great businesses in there. We need to digitize them so they can scale. And there's a lot of work to do there, and uh, we'll get through it. And also, Morris in his, his past life used to manage all the branches at APSA. So I've, I've thrown him the property and facilities, but where Diane and her team are doing such a great job. The two new bits um, is the, what I call our OCO technology, which is the infrastructure business, the IBM Dell um, um, HP business, the enterprise applications, which he already runs, the SAP Oracle, Info and others, and then Gary's um, a software reselling business. Put those in and find out what are we doing, where are the OEMs going, what are their business plans, how do we b remain relevant to them, how do we sell their solutions end to end so that they see that we are a really important partner to them, which is very different to what you're going to do in open digital, but a very important part of our business. It's, it's very annuity income, fairly stable, uh, lower margins, but uh, very regular, and it's a very important part of our business to make sure the cash comes in the door so we can build some of the new things. The, our, our OCO solutions business is really the new age stuff. It's the data analytics, it's the open digital business, the, the open source stuff, all the um, uh, app dev, the cloud and security um, that Richard runs some of it, but we need to really beef that up, get the security bill in because everyone needs security, whether it's security on an app, whether it's security on connectivity, whether it's security in the cloud, we all need it. Um, I've also put the regions in there. The main reason being is those are the businesses we want to take offshore. That's where we've got a massive competitive advantage in terms of cost and everything, and I think they will export. I don't think we can export a SAP business into Europe. You're competing against a Deloitte that's got a $2 billion business in Europe. We're just not going to win that. Um, but certainly we can have a look over time. Is things like open text and that. How do we um, ex expand it across um, our regions. Sean's managing the rump, as I call it. What's in, in Next Tech, there's a lot of sorting out to do. There were a lot of small little businesses. We need to put them together and see what the strategic differentiated offering is for all of them. Um, a, lo a lot of that was originally part of the smart cities. Safe city, we need to see where it goes. And there's some other businesses in there around uh, learning and development, which we'll see where we get to. There's a few businesses that we still made a decision um, uh, last year to sell, and those are in, in process and we'll sell them. There's about, I think, somewhere between 400 to 500 million rand still to come in for those um, businesses. And then um, we've actually got boards now for our RP businesses, uh, and uh, those run almost in independently with, a, with an independent board. What we're looking for for those is to find um, partners for them like we did for CCS and use the value that comes out of those to deliver our balance sheet. And that's the main thrust. We, um, we, I suppose we, we just threw that. We've got uh, the offers in for the, the non-binding offers in for information services, working through those. There'll be some data room. Sabrin's just about to come. I mean, Sintel's just about to come in and Sabrin, we a little bit behind on, but we will get there. And then, you know, using Lafuna and his years of experience to help us manage the public sector at a real political level, because clearly those are still important customers going forward, but we also need to clean up those eight contracts that are really 
making life difficult for us at the moment. So I suppose some of it is, um, it leaves a question around brand, but I know it's on everyone's mind. It's something we will solve for. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a big view either way. At the end of the day, you, you've, you have to have the brand that your customers want to pay for. And so I don't really mind whether we have one brand, whether we have five brands, whether we have two brands. And I think this is something that we will you know, collectively decide uh, so that when we go to market at the end of the year, we'll have a view on what, we, you know, what brand or brands we're going to be using and how we're going to manage them under a single banner. The most important thing with brands is they've got to be consistent. You've got to have this, the same ethics, the same culture, the same values for all of them, otherwise it falls apart. You can't have under you know, one big brand um, different types of brands, if I can put it that way. So this is really step one of something that has to happen. I know you're going to go out into breakout sessions in a minute, and I really want you to think about some of this and uh, we'll have some feedback. Clearly, I need all the feedback. We, we're not going to have time for every single team to, to tell us, but we will collate it, we will use it, and uh, each of these EXCO members will be pulling you all together to start strategizing on a few things. Who, are, who are, are our customers going forward? Who are our competitors? How they're changing? How's the world changing? And how do we cons consolidate businesses to be more effective so that we have bigger um, businesses but still modular and still, still scalable. So uh, that's the feedback that will come back over the next three months. Um, I've asked the, the free thinking guys to help us come up with this EO, EOH way of doing things. They do it every day for, for customers but we're going to build our own way and that will be the template that we use every year and we'll you know, obviously Im improve on it. What I want to do with that is then we want to go into having our own innovation center. So at Pinmill, we are going to have, I don't know what you want to call it, a free thinking room, an innovation room, or whatever it is, where we'll have these TED Talks on key subjects from industry experts, from internal people, where we'll start educating ourselves, educating our customers, but also then going through strategy with our customers the same way as we do our own own strategy and then out of that I'm hoping some ideas will come where we can build some of these platforms that we think our customers want or need and uh, we can start managing them and uh, um, scaling them uh, through our own uh, app store or RP store or you know whatever you want to do it. So there, there's quite a lot that we have to get done but I think it'll be a lot more fun and it'll actually you know um, bring us all together and it'll allow us as a team, as a leadership team, to add value, critique um, um, everyone else's strategy so we make sure that it as actually does mesh in a way, that we're not um, a bunch of tug-of-war people all pulling in the different directions. I don't know if you've seen that, uh, um, that skit with uh, the rowers and uh, if, you know, if, if you're in that uh, Oxford-Cambridge uh, rowing race down the, the Thames, imagine if half... Half the people on one side rode the one way and the other half rode the other way. It would be a total disaster. And this is why we really need to just get in there, decide where we're going, get there. When we get there, we make another decision, we go somewhere else, but we go together and then we'll go far. Um, so that's really the summary of it. I really want you guys to and ladies to go and pull it apart, critique it. There's no wrong answers. There's just things we really want to talk about because we need to solve exponentially, differently, courageously, be bold, and we need to do it together.